everybody has great ideas, you know, um, that they want to chase or accomplish big dreams. What I have been able to do is just work extremely hard, push through those tough days and, you know, just relentlessly chase what I wanted to do. All right, Rick, thanks for coming on the call today to talk about uh, something I think is pretty cool when I heard about it, something that I know we do in our business and something that I know that if you are in business today, even in e-com or you are in coaching, sales, or real estate, or otherwise, you're going to, want to pay attention to this podcast because what we're going to talk about right now is something that I think everybody should be doing, getting back to. And when I got introduced to Rick, I said, man, I got to have him on here and I'm excited today to have you uh, come talk about scaling and automation and more personalization in business. Thanks, Rick, for joining me. It's great to be here, Neil. Thanks for having me. All right, so let's gonna get a little bit of backstory, not too much, but tell us, actually, let's skip some of that. We'll get the backstory as we talk through this combo. Okay. Let's just dig right in and give people something to think about. Uh, sure. What are the things that you're really, as we, as we talked about uh, in our call, what are the things you kind of most feel are, are, are the focus of your next steps as a business builder? Well, as a business right now, it's scaling efficiently, um, setting up systems and processes, not only within um, you know our team, our employees, but also with all the machines and capital equipment and robots that we have. <laughs> it's it's a, a big uh, pill to swallow sometimes because it getting people and robots to work together it can be kind of a headache. But yeah, there's a lot of things that we're working on. You know, we just got done uh, a few months ago uh, building our own robots. We've spent a long, long time researching, developing, uh, going through many phase zeros uh, with multiple engineering companies to make sure we got this right. But yeah, um, it's been really fun building this company so far. Building and inventing, basically, and trying to get robots to not kill people or people to kill yeah. robots, right? Yeah. Yeah, we actually name them T1, T2, T3. You did not. Just like, just like Terminator. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's not giving me a whole lot of confidence I if I was an employee. Yeah. Yeah. So we just thought that was pretty, uh, it was kind of like a fun play on, you know, robots taking over. Probably one of the last things, you know. Do you, uh, you, you dress them up for Halloween? Halloween. Yeah, yeah. Well, we do put little like Christmas trees on the gantry uh, for marketing stuff. But yeah, yeah, it is funny. Dude, that is awesome. So what are we using the robots for, just in case people want to clue in here? Yeah, so what Simply Noted is, we're a client engagement platform, handwriting notes platform. We help companies scale sending genuine handwritten notes or automate it using Zapier or an API or a webhook uh, integration. So what that means is, you know, if you have a CRM, uh, an e-commerce platform, a payment portal, uh, you know, anything that has some type of an event or trigger that happens, we can automate it for you. But what most people do, you know, nonprofits, presidents, is, presidents of schools, CEOs, entrepreneurs, they just want to thank their clients, send out holiday cards and the anniversary card. And it's just like off a mailing list. So if you have like a spreadsheet, CSV file, Excel files, just like mail merge, Hi, first name. We plug in the first name, you know, and we send Steve. really nice, genuine handwritten notes. Yeah, so many really applications cool. of that. Like I said, yeah. we use that in our business to welcome pe people into our coaching side. And uh, yeah. one of the things we're not doing on the e-com side, which I can immediately visualize in this conversation, is if someone comes through Amazon and gets mm -hmm. to the product packaging and saps the QR code for their bonus, special, and you know, incentive, their warranty, or whatever within my packaging, and gets into my funnel, they could immediately be sent. Uh, yep. a handwritten note saying thank you so yep. much for buying xyz product that is a huge yep. opportunity and the dtc or the website channel as you mentioned integrating mm -hmm. with a shopify or woocommerce or something uh yep. to allow the pre, you know a personalized note to be sent to your customers if you guys stop and really think about the power of that personalization that's a unique competitive advantage i know a lot of people are not doing don't you think i don't think uh, that people yeah are doing enough of it. and it's happening in real time you know a lot of businesses that we talk to they say they do it but what happens, they do it sometimes, right? Because they get busy, right? Or they wait like a month and then it's way behind, you know, it's late. So what we're trying to do is make it as seamless as possible, as easy as possible. Um, once it's set up, it's kind of just like running in the background. You don't even think about it, but it it's really cool. And um, we get this feedback all the time from our clients, you know, after they've been using us for a few months, you know, they'll send us screenshots, you know, of somebody se who sent them a picture of their handwritten note saying, thank you so much for that note. That was so awesome. So, and they're always just like, oh yeah, we did send that. Yeah, that's <laughs> so cool. That's so great. It reminds yeah. me because we were watching the, the, yeah. 
Christmas movie from Chevy uh, with Chevy Chase last night, and he got the you know the note that was sent by the guy where he thought he was going to get his bonus. <laughs> and his dad, yeah, the jelly club or whatever. Like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, Christmas yeah. card. Uh, way to go there, Griswold. Yeah, uh, yeah. The guys like corporate cards. We send out corporate cards, um, <laughs> <laughs> which is a totally different thing than what you're talking about. Just so people are clear, these are I mean these are your actually robot written hand yeah. generated notes. And if I understand it correctly, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. You can even take people's signatures, can you not? Of course, um, yeah. So, can... yeah, everything we do is real pen written, real ballpoint pens. We've actually invented our own pen. Um, it was a complete necessity because we just went through pens so fast. But um, we use a, a, a custom-built pen cartridge. It's a weighted brass cartridge. And then we use a custom-built um, uh, pen insert. It has 300% more ink. So these pens can actually last all day. Normal pens wouldn't. But yeah, everything's real pen written. Um, it's not just like a normal like type font that you would get offline. We actually create a genuine handwriting style. So we actually dig into the kerning, which is like the natural spacing of your letters and your words. Um, the ligature styles, like what does two T's look like next to each other versus one T? Um, what is two M's, two O's? You know, we pull out those characteristics. Do your T's connect to your H? And then we even go into font or glyph and letter placement. Like what does an E at the end of your word look like versus the E at the beginning of your word or in the middle? So, yeah, it's... You're getting kind of sophisticated, been, dude. Because I way imagine more, this offer... Yeah. No, I imagine yeah. your operation was like a, a hundred grandma sitting in a warehouse no. with a pen, all, you know, custom writing these things down. Maybe that's how you got started <laughs> before the robot showed up. Yeah, so my mindset was how... We're, from the very beginning, now we actually started with pen plotters, which we quickly found out was not going to be a scalable solution. Yeah. But, um, you know, working with people, number one, they're like, it's like uh, herding cats, trying to keep people there to sit there and do tasks every single day. But then also it's a, it's a quality control nightmare because you can't, you know, what's their handwriting going to look like after 10 notes? You know, are they going to yeah. spell something wrong? And robots are actually pretty reliable. Um, <laughs> if things are set up through software, they like, take yeah, over they the world. Be, <laughs> but yeah, you can control the the aesthetics of it, the way it looks, the way it writes. You know, they really don't mess up. Um, but we still yeah. do do a human element at the end. There is quality control at the end. A real human does actually look at the card, yeah. look at the envelope, and place it to ensure it looks great. But yeah, yeah I the, mean, this those is are a, who, who are not watching this on video, you should note that he doesn't have like carpal tunnel because he wasn't the guy writing all of this to start off with. Um, yeah. he, you know, he's <laughs> the, yeah. uh, in fact, how did you get started with this? Were you got, were you literally yeah. the guy writing notes or where did that like? Yeah. So my background's a, a, actually in athletics. I played uh, college in professional football. Um, was lucky enough to play in the NFL for a few years when I got done, uh, Still had that competitive drive, got into corporate medical sales, was a rookie of the year my first year, and then top 1% or top five sales reps in the company. Then 2017, still really wasn't satisfied, still was pretty young, went back and did my MBA, and then that's where the idea of Simply Noted began. Um, I had a professor in a marketing class talking about success rates in marketing, and everything was super marginal. Direct mail was like a you know low single digit or low double digit, cold call, um, you know, email, text messaging, everything was pretty nominal. And then he ended the the lecture, you know, with a half-hearted jokingly saying like, hey guys, you know what still works, you know, more than ever is a good old fashioned handwritten note. It gets open 99% of the time. And I don't think he, I don't know if that was really a part of his lecture or if he was just like kind of making a joke, but it really stuck out to me. Um, and I thought like, yeah, it's a no brainer, but like, who the heck has the time to sit down and do this, right? I had 400 medical like clients at the time, and it took me and my wife two weekends just to write envelopes and put in a printed Christmas card. So, wow. um, yeah, and I, I got to work. How did an NFL star go to medical devices to, I mean, w was all that just training to get to this point, or how did that help you? Like that yeah, I have a uh, an unnatural amount of drive. Um, if I want to do something, I mean, and if you look up like my my NFL scouting report, it's like this guy's like an overachiever, high motor, like super hard worker. Like that's what my I thought it was kind of like a backhanded compliment, but like at the same time, I thought bit. it was like, it like yeah. one of those things. Yeah, you get it college yeah. during the uh, assessment yeah, period. Yeah, I was like, you know what? what that's fine. Like, I, I, I actually would rather be known for being a hard worker. But um, right. yeah, like my background's in sales and marketing. Um, 
it has been an absolute uh, whirlwind tornado trying to figure all this stuff out. But, you know, I, I do have a team of software developers, front end, back end, um, electrical engineers, mechanical engineers. And what I've gotten really good at over the last four years is being a good project manager envisioning a problem like I want to solve and then figuring out a way to get that problem solved, putting together a team, managing that team and keeping everybody like on a path moving forward. Um, but I was just super passionate about this project. I think handwritten notes are going to make like a, a massive resurgence here in the business world because everybody's competing digitally nowadays. If you think about it, like you go to like your little small business seminar, everything's like email marketing, you know, text message marketing, you know, it's all digital, like social media, ads, pay-per-click. You know, the average person gets 4,000 notifications on their phone a month. Um, 100, the average office worker, like between like spam emails and normal emails, is over 100 emails a day. You know, the average person receives less than seven handwritten notes a year. And that mailbox is empty, right? And they're appreciated. So, yeah, dude, yeah. that's a huge thing, man. That is, it so, is. It, it, did you eat your own, you know, lunch as they say, or do you, do you, you subscribe to your own medicine as part of your marketing, actually sending handwritten notes out to people? Yeah. So we actually, um, drink our own Kool-Aid over here for sure. Drink your own Kool-Aid. Um, That's another way of yeah, saying it. Yeah. So right? we do, we've done a really, my, my background's in sales and marketing. So I know how to like kind of mine a list, create like a, like a sales and marketing flow outreach yeah. to kind of bring on yeah. new, new leads. And we do everything, you know, from digital email, social also, we'll send handwritten notes. So we kind of hit them from all angles to try to get in, in front of them. But I think the best way, you know, that really sells our clients on our service is they, when they see our product. Because what we do is we'll send them a handwritten note. And at the end, we'll say, P.S., this was written by a machine. Like, that's usually like the hook. They're like, what? Like, they thought it was a handwritten note. So, like, they obviously want to learn more. And um, it's, a, it's, an, it's a phenomenal sales tool, marketing tool. Um, because you can Dude, scale it and automate like it. it. I'm actually, my brain wheel is starting to churn like crazy now <laughs> yeah. about different ways and ideas that I could apply this to, to the business and development as well as the e-com side. So yeah. in, in terms of that, how many cards are you pumping out now in your business, say on a month by month basis? You know, we're, we're just passing our fourth year, you know, some, the days and the months when we're busy, we're averaging, you know, anywhere from like eight to 15,000 cards a day, but it really just depends on um, you know, the length of message and the time of year, but, you know, just like every business, we have really, really busy months and slower months, but, um, you know, what we've done over the last four years, I have not spent any money on marketing, um, literally none. Everything has been to develop a really strong foundation for this business. You know, our website now gets over 300,000 active visitors a month. So that's not off of ads. That's all organic. And then we invested a lot of money in building a platform in a robotic technology that was just going to be the best in our niche or in our business. And we just got done with that, which is really like, I'm super excited because for the first time in four years, now I'm going to actually have a marketing <laughs> budget. <laughs> a marketing so actually, budget. We were laughing I've about that earlier. Like, I've literally spent, what? yeah, I've literally spent less than $800 a month. You um, got a marketing budget now. Yeah, Be careful now with that. It, you can blow yeah, that pretty fast if you if you get a little too happy on the, yeah. on the spin. <laughs> what is going to be your bigger thing? Is it pay traffic media or what are you going after? It's going to, yeah. So um, right now what we're doing is rebuilding a web app just to be a little bit more of like a, um, what do you call it? Uh, enterprise level like web app. As we've yeah. grown, I've just I've built what I thought we needed. But, you know, being four years in now, I know what we need to yeah. scale to be enterprise level already. But it's yeah. mostly going to be ads, um, like pay per click, that type of stuff, because those people have more of search intent. You know, they're looking to solve a problem quickly. That's um, right. Yeah, cool. and you know, a lot of people don't. You know, they'll just click the first thing they see. So, um, yeah. But well, once you get them in and you ask them for their address to send them a note, then you send them a note, right? I mean, yeah. that's the first thing, right? Send them a note with a yeah. coupon that says, "Here, go sign up for fifteen percent off." Yeah. I bet you're going to crush the crap out of that offer. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. What's your goals for the next four years now? We're four years in, you're growing, you're scaling, you know, what does the next four years look like? Yeah. My, my mindset when we built this was I wanted, you know, there's a few goals that I wanted to accomplish. I wanted to prove that I can be a successful entrepreneur. I wanted to make the Inc. 5000, um, build our own robot, but my last goal is to be acquired. So, um, we're trying to build this business to be ready, um, to be acquired probably in the next three or four years. I believe this company can be a hundred million dollar business a year. 
Um, there's just so many different opportunities. We've had really big conversations with really big companies about big orders, um, but it's going to take, you know, a lot of money to scale, you know, have a 50,000 square foot facility, you know, and I've been all 100%, 100% self-funded. So, um, this, this is going to, yeah, this is going to have to be bought and scaled, but that's my last goal. Um, you know, if you've read the E-Myth, right, I'm really just trying to work on this business right now, I'm tr as they call it, kill the king. I'm trying to figure out a way to make sure this business can operate without me. So the next four years is basically just scaling, you know, building some bulletproof systems and processes and preparing it to be sold because I'm telling you in the next five years, we're, we're ahead of the game. Uh, handwritten notes are going to make a resurgence for sure in business, especially now that I don't disagree with you. technology. Yeah. So much is changing. And if you just look at the direct yeah. marketing stats that have come out recently and how much has changed in the last 20 years and which yep. demographic is actually opening uh, most of the direct mailing today, if, most, if people don't recognize 18 to 35 year olds are the ones opening the most mail and purchasing mm -hmm. off of direct mail now, that group has actually taken over the segment greatly. So just thinking about that, folks, yeah. from your avatar and your e-commerce side. Um, and if you're definitely thinking about getting involved in lead generation, you're in real estate, if you're in marketing and sales of any kind, if you're in e-commerce, and you are not thinking about seriously how I touch my customer more times, okay, and get in front of them for higher revenue profits and stuff, you should really, really check out what Rick is doing and make sure that you guys employ that into your workable brands as a unique opportunity to touch a customer um, and really make them a customer for life. Uh, Rick, what, um, what words of wisdom can you leave us with today in your experience, man, for somebody listening so I think, today? Yeah, I think anybody, you know, everybody has great ideas, you know, um, that they want to chase or accomplish big dreams. And I think what I've done here at Simply Noted is, you know, something that anybody can look at and I guess take for themselves that they can do whatever they want to do. Like I don't have a robotics background, an industrial automation background, a software background. If anything, I probably have the worst background. I'm an athlete, you know, my hard skills were just like work ethic, perseverance and work hard, right? I don't have like any traditional hard skills training in software or engineering. But what I have been able to do is just work extremely hard, push through those tough days and, you know, just, you know, relentlessly chase what I wanted to do and, um, it's growing. So I just, I just encourage anybody, if you have a dream, um, you know, go after it because, you know, what is it, what do they call it? You know, that regret of not chasing it 50 years from now or 20 years from now, you know, that's going to haunt you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Good words of wisdom. Absolutely. And just proof the entrepreneurial spirit is still alive and you are, uh, embody that man. I'm so great. To, it's so grateful to have you on here. I am so grateful to have you on here and I'm honored that you could spend some time with us today. Um, everybody go check out simply noted. You should, you should understand what they're doing. This man is making a, a go at it. And I think you will like their service. I think you'll like what he's offering. He's a, um, just a great individual. I've got to know a little bit more about and dude, I hope he gets you back here in the coming years and follow up with you and continue to see you grow and continue to see to reach those goals, man. And that would be uh that'd be fantastic to stay with you. Thanks so much for coming on, man. Thanks. John. I really appreciate it.